So yesterday, we debuted our new segment called Final Take. So this is an opportunity for Stephen A. and Max to go in, let loose on a topic of their choosing, a player, a coach, a team. Yesterday, Stephen A. put Jeff Fisher on notice. Who are you calling out today? I'll let you know right now. Did anyone hear the news? When LeBron James arrives in New York tonight to face the Knicks on Wednesday, he's not playing any part in honoring the Cavs' contractual agreement by staying at a Trump hotel. For those who may have forgotten, LeBron James endorsed Hillary Rodham Clinton. He couldn't endorse Trump in his rhetoric. But now that the election has passed, even if the emotions have not, rather than engage in pseudo protests that amount to nothing at this point, perhaps the ultra statesman that is LeBron James could take a moment to emulate the behavior of his good friend, President Barack Obama, by dealing with the present issue of the African-American vote. After all, the black vote had everything to do with Trump being our new president-elect, did it not? Sure, white men and women showed up and voted for Trump, as did 28% of the Latino population. The funny thing is, however, actually not so funny, is that they did so while too many of Hillary's supporters were so busy lamenting the possibility of a Trump presidency that they actually ensured his presidency by not showing up at the polls, where it counted. Two million fewer African Americans who came out and voted for President Obama in 2012 showed up to vote for Hillary this past election. More than 100 million eligible voters didn't bother to vote at all. With Obamacare on the docket, Supreme Court justices to be picked, the economy and national security issues to address, the Colin Kaepernick's of the world were more conspicuous than ever before, failing to show up and do their part as Obama and LeBron had employed them to do, particularly in places like North Carolina, Wisconsin, Michigan, Pennsylvania, and of course, Ohio. Essentially, had black folks showed up to vote this time, as they did for Obama, another Clinton would be en route to the White House, period. Everyone with a voice needs to say so, especially LeBron James. Champions take on challenges, don't they? They put in the work. They identify mistakes and correct them. And when they win, they explain how. They also do that when they lose. Folks had a chance to elect Hillary. They didn't get it done. Let negligence and apathy usurp common sense, acknowledging why, then moving forward are recipes of champions. A nice time to echo such a message would be now, with words of inspiration, that is, not just by choosing to check into a different hotel. He dropped the mic. As always, these videos will be posted on Facebook. Join the conversation. You might spark a, a thought for them. Stephen A., you killed it. Our next guest called it the worst performance he has seen from any team this year when the Jets got demolished by the Colts on Monday Night Football, losing 41-10. to We also discussed earlier how Doug Peterson called his team out for not playing hard after the Eagles lost to the Bengals. Damian Woody Ooh. in the house with this crispy line. How we doing, my friend? <laughs> you took the words right out of my mouth, Molly. Crispy. And good. Looks What's up, good. my man? What's up, with good? You, boy? That's a straight Everything razor, good? right? You went, you went with the straight razor with the alcohol and everything, like yesterday, I would oh, say. Man, it's laser sharp. Mm. Yeah. It's laser yeah. sharp. What, 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 what's the deal? That was real bad last night. Yeah, that was real yeah. bad. Yeah. It, it was. Yeah, it was. Damien, how do you know when a football team's quit? <sighs> wow. Uh, well, for, first of all, let, first, oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Me, I, I, yeah. the, the reason why it's important that we ask you that question is because just for the purposes of this, we're watching other shows. Mm -hmm. Like a Ryan Clark was on Mike and Mike this morning, mm -hmm. talking about how he has a problem when folks say he quit because a lot of times he sees effort out there. People just ain't effective or efficient, mm -hmm. which is why we want to know, what is quitting? Define to us how you can see it. What did you see last night? It, for me, first of all, let, let me say, as a former player, one of, the last, one of the last things you want to do is really question other players and, and say that they quit. Right. Mm -hmm. But with that being said, what I saw on, what I saw on TV last night, and I, particularly I look on the defensive side of the football because defense is usually defined by hustle. You know what I mean? Like guys sprinting to the football, getting after it. Mm -hmm. What I saw from the Jets last night on the defensive side of the football, it, it, it was probably the worst effort that I've seen from any team all year. I mean, Take, for instance, the, the Jets' defensive line. Now, coming to the season, that was supposed to be the strength of the team. They got a bunch of guys who are, you know, star, star named players going against the, the, the Indianapolis Colts offensive line, which is the weakness of their team. Andrew Luck had all day to throw back there last night. 
all day. And when you look at the Colts offensive line, they got a rookie at center. They got a rookie at right tackle. Bad a se- yeah, second year right guard. I mean, this is a unit that's been bad. You So you would have thought going in, okay, this is a matchup that the Jets should just dominate and get after Andrew Luck. Didn't see any of it. Nothing. It was, I mean, guys weren't even registering on a stat sheet last night from the defensive line. Then when you look at Andrew Luck throwing passes all over, guys were just busting coverages, guys running wide open. I didn't see anybody like angry, pissed off, or any of that. I totally from the def- agree from the it, defensive I, side of football. I think I could take it a step further and tell me what you think of this. When what I'm thinking is, I can't readily recall another nationally televised game in any sport where I saw a team quit to that extent. Like, I think if someone said, what's the, you know, like a short list of the quittingest team you ever saw, that's on it. Like you said this year, but when was the last time you saw it to that level where it's like, can, can you guys try a little bit? There was no effort. Yeah, and the thing, to, the thing that disappoints me is, you just look at last week when they played New England. I mean, they took New England to the brink last week. So like, and, to, and to come back this week on national television and to put out that type, of, that type of performance, to me, it speaks to the character of the team. Because you shouldn't, ha- you shouldn't have that type of effort displayed on national television. Listen, your resume is on, your resume is being put out there every, t- every single time you step between the white lines. 31 other teams are going to look at that tape, look at your effort. That's, that's your I, signature. That's your moment. And to put that out there, come on, man. That's let me ridiculous. say a couple of things, and I'm just going to go here. First of all, I'm a diehard Yankee fan. One of the things that I love most was George Steinbrenner. I used to love when you'd see him in a suite and somebody made a mistake and he was ready to raise holy hell. Yeah, he might have overreacted. He might have been too much, but it was clear. If you're going to wear his uniform and play for his franchise, the last thing in the world that man had better ever question about you is your effort. It better not happen. And that's what I always appreciated and loved about George Steinbrenner. If I were Woody Johnson, not that this is plausible because there's a union, there's a player association, this is one of those rare moments I believe the owner would have been justified in walking into the locker room trying to withhold dudes' checks. This is one of those moments. That's how bad it was in that first half yesterday. I could not believe how I I saw guys literally, am I lying, walk into the end zone. Like, walk. And and, and guys not even come at them. I I couldn't believe what I was seeing. And then I'm going to go here. Look, man, this is more applicable to college football than, 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 than the NFL. But there's only five black coaches in the NFL. And we look at the uh, co- you know, big-time college football, we don't see too many you know, of African-Americans in these positions. And Max and Molly, and he'll know where I'm going here with this, the opportunities are so scarce. You cannot have a black coach and their effort of the players is being questioned. Because everybody ain't Jeff Fisher, especially the brothers. And you ain't getting that kind of latitude and leeway. You mess that up, that's the kind of stuff that cost you the most because what the owners don't say quietly, but all the African-American coaches fully understand this, is that when it comes to young men of sport like basketball, a sport like football, where you have predominantly African-Americans playing the sport, when you don't perform, that's one thing. But when your effort is questioned, it's a direct assault on the coach because they look at that coach and they say, you can't control these dudes. They can't even go out there and fight for you. What I need you for. That's what happens. And that's why you can question efficiency. You can question game planning and schemes and all of this other stuff. But when you are a black coach and you're in the effort of the players are being questioned, it is the ultimate death knell. And those players know it. And to go out there and perform like that last night is just so shameful. I can't even say anything else. As, as a former member of the Jets. By Did I say anything wrong, by the way? No. All right. I, I, I mean, I mean. Is there something with the organization? You know, I always say a fish rots from the head down. And the Jets seem to me, as a Giants fan, I'm always laughing at them. It's always like a dysfunctional organization. When I have my, my Jets fans' friends, I, and when they have kids, I'm like, why would you do that to the kid? Why don't you just raise him a Giants fan? Be happy. I asked my boy Jeff. You know my boy Jeff, y'all met. I got yeah. my, one of my yeah. best friends, Jeff Brown in L.A. He did, listen, 
He's one of the best people I know in my life, man. One of my best boys from high school in Queens, New York. Man, what he does to my godchildren is shameful. He's got them as Jets fans. And Mets fans. Right. You're I mean, for how of- bad can he be? <laughs> I, I tell this to Jeff all the time. My godson, Nicholas, man. I mean, to subject my godson to this. To, to being a Jets fan. And sign them to a I, life of But misery. I gave a pass. I gave a pass once Bowles was there. But now. So, so is there what something the about the organization that leads to this level of dysfunction? I always say everything starts at the top and works its way on down. I mean, you look at all the, the really good organizations. What, 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 do, what do they all have in common? They're strong at the top, and the, everything, the message resonates on down. I feel bad for Gotta Todd Bowles, but this is his shot at head coaching with the Jets. I feel bad for him. Gotta leave it there. So, it's been over a month since Alden Smith applied for reinstatement from his year-long suspension for violating the league's substance abuse policy. The league said his suspension falls under the collectively bargained substances of abuse policy, and many steps have to be satisfied within 60 days of the player's application for reinstatement before it can be granted. Ian Rappaport is reporting that uh, sources Smith is setting up a meeting with Roger Goodell or high-ranking official to state his case for reinstatement. The Raiders are tied with the Patriots for the best record in the AFC should they want Alden Smith back. Yeah, of course. He's a good player, really good player, an impact player. Um, The question is, should he be allowed back? And my sense of that, Stephen A., he's been off a year already. Um, I I take those the the issues he's had very seriously, not just failing the substance abuse policy, which doesn't mean as much to me, but especially the hit and run and and mainly the drunk drive, the DW, the DUI. I drive in my car with my kids. I don't want any drunk drivers on the road like any. I have not, and I'm sympathetic to the idea that their judgment is altered when they're drunk and then they Uber. make bad decisions. Uber. Right. But I'm not sympathetic to the idea that they actually go ahead and do that and endanger my children, you know, on the road. Mm-hmm. That said, if the punishment is such that after a certain amount of time your case is reviewed, then you can't just summarily dismiss the idea of his reinstatement without reviewing the case, unless you believe that it's so beyond the pale that he should never be reviewed. But that's not the rules that are in place right now. And, and I, would, I don't think we need to be overboard in our kind of uh, punishment of this guy. Uh, simply because we don't like what he did. He served his time. It is time to review and see if he's ready. Well, here's where I differ. I disagree with you, first of all. Secondly, I'm not devoid of compassion. I don't think he should be banned. It's not like I don't believe he should ever play in the NFL again. Uh, And, of course, the NFL says you're suspended for a year, so the year is up, and this is the time where they get to review the case. Me, however, I would not allow him back into the league this year. He would have to wait and then start off the season. You have to show me that you have the intestinal fortitude and the wherewithal to endure OTAs, to endure a training camp, to endure preseason and going to the regular season, that you can do all of these things while making sure you're not inebriated. I would like you to keep in mind, you brought up your kids and you talk about driving your kids. I'm the same way, I'm a daddy too. Guess what? Not only was this dude drunk one time, it was at seven in the morning, man. You're talking about when kids going to school. Yep. This, ain't, this ain't in the middle of the night. Now, first of all, there's no excuse at any time to get behind the wheel of a car when you're inebriated. I get that. Please don't get me wrong. But at the same time, you come from a club at one in the morning and stuff like that. There's less people on the road. And I'll be damned if any kid got any business being in the streets that time of night. Seven in the morning? That's when school buses are coming around. That's when kids are standing on, on the side on the corner waiting for the school bus to come and stuff like that. Come on now. You know, so when I look at it from that perspective, you're going to come back and instantly you're going to be thrusted into the, the, the hype and hysteria of the black hole and the Oakland Raiders and the 10 and 2 season. Air. You know how it is. You're euphoric. You're in a celebratory mood. You're having success. That usually lends itself towards you, you know, revisiting some of those transgressions that you may have suffered from before because you're in that state of mind where you're, you, the world is beatable. You're the king, etc. No, no, no. He's not a part of this. Pump the brakes. If I'm Roger Goodell and the NFL, I'm not saying I don't listen to the case. I'm not saying I don't look out for him. I'm not saying I don't help him. But I don't let him back in now. I make I, him I, wait I think until the end of the season. I think there's a lot of wisdom in what you said in principle in terms of looking at it kind of generally. But I think 
if the time has come to review and they and they talk to him and they are satisfied right. that he is in a mental condition mm -hmm. to play, mm -hmm. then he's already served his year. Hold on. They felt similar about Josh Gordon. Even though he wasn't allowed back on the field, they so, you know, they, they modified their rules a little bit, led him back with the team to hang out, work out, practice with the team. And then a week before he was due to get back on the field, he had to, you know. Yeah, but he's not Josh Gordon. It's I, not fair to hold that against, no, 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 what against I'm saying, Alden Smith. I, I think it's very fair. And the reason why I think it's very fair is because he has just as many, if not more transgressions than Josh yes, but Gordon. But he is an individual, but, and he needs to be no, no, judged no, no, on the merits yeah, of, but, but, of but, his but, own but behavior. But again, whether it's your court system, whether it's a job or anything else, when there's precedent that's established, even if it didn't involve you directly, that's usually used as judgment to make an decision Josh about somebody Gordon else. Because Josh had recidivist kind of, okay. I'm just saying, it happens. Yeah, yeah. It happens. We gotta go. I we gotta move on. Yeah, I want to revisit an earlier conversation with that we had, which I thought was very interesting. So we asked you guys to weigh in on who of the big three you would let go and I just want to make sure in case people didn't know Stephen A said Steph Curry and Max said Clay Thompson here's the results 44% said they would let go of Clay 32% Durant 24% Curry did our followers get that right yeah exactly right in that order you got to keep Steph he's the engine Kevin Durant's the second most talented player in the world top three certainly and then Clay is excellent I love Clay but he's largely the beneficiary of the team he's on I respect where everybody's coming from. I also respect the fact that they're wrong. I'd put my basketball knowledge up against anybody on this planet. That's how I feel. I'm not changing my mind. I love the hell out of Steph Curry. He's big time. But I'm just looking at basketball on both ends of the floor. My position stands. Interesting conversation, though. Coming up.